In this series, I'm taking a look at the Opto22 node packages for Node-RED. Specifically, this video is focused on the Groove I.O. nodes. I'll show what the different types of nodes are, give some examples of how to use them, and explain what makes them different from any of these other nodes. Let's get started. Here I have a flow already set up with some examples we can look at, and we're first going to start with the read node. The way this is set up is it's looking at my analog input on module 3, and we're going to be looking at channel 0, which is this potentiometer right here. If I inject, we can see the value is almost 4,000. I'll turn it way up, inject again, and it reads 7,000. So it's clearly getting live data. If I double-click this node, we can see how it's configured. I do have my device set up, and I do go over that in a previous video. I also have my data type configured, and this can be digital, analog, the configuration, as well as reading whole modules and uh, quality flags, and finally, MMP addresses, which we'll get to at the end. Once you've selected the correct channel type, all you have to do is put in the module index and the channel index, and you're able to read and eventually write to these different points. Now you'll note that I'm using the indexes here, not any kind of tag name. And that's because the Groove I.O. nodes work whether you're running a strategy or not. So this can work on a Groove Epic that's not running a strategy, and of course Groove Rio, which does not have the support for strategies. And so I'm just simply able to inject or trigger in some way this node, and then it outputs the value in whichever property I define, in this case just message.payload. If I wanted to get a continuous stream of this data, so that I can constantly get live data, I can just configure this inject to happen on a re repeated interval. So I'll set this to something nice and short like 0.5 seconds. Now when I deploy, if I clear up my debug, you'll see we're getting this constant stream of messages. As I turn it up, you can see the number increasing, and as I turn it down, you see the number decrease. But there's no dead banding on this, it's just reading whatever it is, even if it's only flickering a small amount. But we can easily implement that with a node from the function section called the filter node, or RBE, which is report by exception. What we'll do is we'll just double click this node, and you can see it'll block the value unless it changes, which you can see it is changing just a little bit, or you can block the value unless the change is greater than some value. For example, we may want to set this to uh, 100. Now when it changes by 100 units, uh, that is when we'll get an output. So when I click done and deploy, we'll clear up the debug pane and you'll see it's suddenly gone quiet. But when I increase my potentiometer here, you'll see that it's meeting that dead band requirement. I get a couple of messages and then it stops once more. So this is a pretty convenient way to use the read node, dead band it, and only get the change in value that you're interested in. But with the Groove I.O. nodes, there's an easier way, and that's using the input node. So we'll disable this read node and enable this input node, and you can see it's configured with the same module and channel, 3 and 0, and it is configured as an analog channel value, and I can set a dead band right in here. So I can increase it from 10 to that 100 units I had before. I'll deploy, clear out my debug, and we can see now it's going to be scanning this point, and as I decrease it, we'll get those values coming in, and when I stop, it stops, and again, increasing, I start getting messages again. So this input node essentially puts all of the, these three nodes into the functionality of just one node. This is a really convenient way to read both analog and digital values into your flow. Granted, you don't have the fine control over the interval like you do here with the inject node being 0.5 seconds, but for most applications, the one second that this reads at is plenty. It also works with digital channels. For example, here I have uh, module 0, channel 0, and it is a digital state change, and whenever I press it, it's toggled on, so we get true, and toggled off, we get false, and we get no intermediate messages. It's only on change. So that's the read nodes and the input nodes and how they're a little bit different. We can also read in values, for example, the digital channel from module 1 and channel 9. If we look at that in Groove Manage in our I.O. section, if we come to this 
module one, you can see on channel nine, I have this panel light blue. And you'll note if I go into configure, I don't have public access enabled. This is privately covered. I have to have my API key in order to access it, but I don't need public access for this node to work. So we'll see if I toggle this on, I get the blue light on. And if I were to read this point by injecting here, we can see it's true. And when I toggle it off, the light goes off and I see it is in fact false. But I can also inject true and false into the right node to control this light from node red. So here you can see it's a uh, right node. It's configured with the same module one, channel nine. It's a digital output state change. And I'm sending whatever I send in message.payload gets written to this point. So here I have it set to true. So when I trigger this, it does get set to true. And I can easily change that to false, select inject now, and it goes to false. So it's very responsive and easy to control your IO, both reading and writing. But a great extra feature that Groove IO nodes have are that they can access MMP addresses. So if I double click this, if I have the data type MMP address selected, I can put in an address, specify what type I'm reading from that address, the length of data in the case of a string, the encoding, and output it on some specific value. So let's take a look at a value I could read in. If I go all the way back home, and it'll be under IO and IO services, I have a bunch of tools here I can use to work with the scratch pad and MMP. The MMP is what we're going to be focused on. But if I bring open the scratch pad, we'll bring that open in a new tab, we can see that on the string data type in the string scratch pad area on index four, I have this string hello from Groove Manage. So I want to read that into node red. We're just going to use this scratch pad as an MMP example. But what is the MMP address for this particular string? Well, if we go back to IO services and select the MMP calculator, I can check whatever area I want. So if I were to select this area, you can see all the options I have available. I'm going to come down to this scratch pad string. I can specify which element. In this case, I'm looking at number four. And we can see that the length of the string is stored at this address and the string element itself starts at this address. So I'll just copy this to my clipboard. We'll come back into node red and paste that into the address field. Now when I click done and deploy, when I click inject and read in that MMP address, there we go, I get that string that I set in the scratch pad. And we can also write to MMP addresses. So let's do that as well. Here, I'll just set the write node to MMP address. I am inputting a string and I'll paste that same address in. And I'm going to be writing the message from uh, the value from message.payload. So here I'm just injecting on message.payload, hello from node red. We'll be able to see that change in the scratch pad. So I'll go ahead and deploy. We'll inject that. We get hello from node red. And if I bring open the scratch pad again, there we go, hello from node red. So that just briefly goes over what the different nodes are. We have this extra input type, how they're all set up with their module and channel values that don't require public access, as well as access to the MMP address areas. And this includes Scratchpad, as well as many other things that you can check out over here in your MMP calculator under IO services. We'll have some other videos in this series that go over all the other nodes. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can come over to our forums at forums.opto22.com. And we'll also have our developer site linked in the comments below. Thanks for watching.